go. And I just realized I did not change the title. Let's see here. Okay. So it, I it just realized reads. I did not change the title. Let's see here. Hold on. Let me see if I can do it. Yeah. It reads currently Tigress McDaniel Zoom meeting. So we'll go to Evolve Weekly. Boom and boom. Let me see. Today we will discuss we'll survey the legislature for North Dakota. And next week, South Dakota. Okay. Now, give me one second to see if I can also integrate on Facebook. Nope, doesn't give me that option. So one, one location at a time, evidently. Okay, so whew, it's been a full day for me. I had to get some patio furniture. Well, I didn't have to. I wanted an upgrade. Uh, it wasn't as comfortable as it seemed in past years. So I took care of all that, tackled that, and actually just got home under an hour ago, got myself presentable for you all and for myself, you know, because my standards are pretty high as well. Um, and now I am here with you to cover North Dakota. Next week, we'll cover, of course, South Dakota. So we'll begin with the affirmation. And of course, I am Tigress Sydney Acute McDaniel, your host of Evolve Weekly. And this is a 52-week series on how to implement a more perfect union. Affirmation time. May I further enlarge our collective and individual understanding on the topics that we will discuss, as well as enlarge our unity, and may I not further cause divide. All right, here we go. And my hair is a little wet, so you may notice that I will be adjusting it, my braids here, because um, it makes, you know, water makes things heavier for those of you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and jump on over to let's share screen. Oh, and let me do this too. Let me go ahead and say good day. Good day. How do I get over there? Love. No, it's there we go. Give me one second. View in live stream control. Okay, this is the first time I've done this. Very interesting. Very nice. Oh, there we go. All right, let me go ahead and say good day. Okay, good day. Category. Um, no, not entertainment. I hope that I am somewhat entertaining, you know, loosely speaking, uh, but I mostly in, intend to be informative and transformative and enlightening. So give me one second because I do want to change that. I don't like that designation. And then we will. Nope. We'll come back. And go, oh, there we go. And then begin. I'm not sure if we lost connections. I'm gonna try one more time here. 
we'll go, oh, there we go, and then begin. All right, I think we are good to go now. Make sure. I'm not sure if we lost connections. I'm gonna try one more time here. We'll go, oh, there we go, and then begin. Once I get confirmation here, then we will. All right, I think we are good to go now. Yep, we are, we're good to go. And you can probably hear that. Of course, there's a lag on the uh, live stream that you see. And so I just wanted to make sure, okay. All right, so now let's share a screen and let's head on over to the North Dakota legislature website. Here we go. Sure, we'll use Safari this go around. All right, here we go. We need another window. And just that simple, typed in North Dakota legislature, just as we've been doing for each state. Okay, so this is a very interesting landing page. Um, we noticed the image here, the first image um, seems a little more engaging for a younger audience and not necessarily an adult audience. Um, I find that somewhat interesting. I'm not sure if I would start with, you know, I wouldn't lead with an image that was appealing to youth, because um, I'm not even sure this would be appealing to anyone, you know, teenagers, if you will, like maybe 14 and up, maybe would find this a bit adolescent, you know, uh, interesting. Okay, so let's just look at the other images. Okay, let's see how to testify and COVID-19 and legislative bill tracking. The other images are really not all that appealing. The brown is a very interesting color. This is a first that we've seen. I imagine that it is um, related to the flag for North Dakota. Let's see color brown in North Dakota. See if it has some purpose. Yeah, North Carolina state symbols. State fruit, choke cherry, interesting, okay. And coat of arms. North Dakota's dark blue field displays a bald eagle holding an olive branch and a bundle of arrows in its claws. Uh, the legislation specifically required that the flag conform to the color form and size of the regimental flag carried by the North Dakota infantry in the Spanish American war in 1898. Let's see here. And we had a note. Well, I saw something about brown, but now I no longer see it. Okay, so the dark blue, the brown for the eagle, evidently. Yeah, I'm not sure where we saw. Let me see if I, let me go back. We won't spend too much time on this. Let's see, the metal lark sports a yellow breast with a black bib over its molten brown. Yeah, so that's the 
So it's not an eagle or is a meadow lark an eagle? I'm not sure. The meadow lark is the size of a robin. That's interesting because I thought they mentioned a, an eagle. Hmm. The eagle's on the flag and then the, ah, right here. Okay, so the state bird is the Western meadowlark, but what appears, and of course, you know, you have the, the molten brown, or excuse me, mottled, which is spotted, if you will, um, brown body and the yellow breast there. Interesting. And then the flag itself, is not really uh, significant for the color brown. I don't know. Significance of brown, we'll try one other place, just in case there is significance. Um, in North Dakota, just to make sure. Okay. Interesting. There's a gay brown, but I'm not sure how that plays into everything. Hmm. Farmer Brown bringing his dying land back in North Dakota by focusing on soil health. Yeah, so interesting, very, very interesting in our DC. It seems like it might be a, some backstory there, really. I try to move with intuition as well as intelligence. And so that story might come up again. Let's see if it comes up as we're looking across the site. Okay, so maybe that's the relevance there. Okay, and let's continue on. I tend to love color, all color, because I always say my favorite color is color. But I don't think that I would lead with this brown for a legislative website. It's not bad. It's not completely unappealing. It's just a bit drab, you know? So now let's go to the legislative assembly. All right. So. They're in their 67th legislative assembly. You know how when you have the different administrative or the um, federal administration and they count them as well each term. Um, that's interesting because we've not seen them have a focus on that on other sites. I do tend to appreciate this um, emphasis so that it is understood about the organizational function and uh, makeup uh, for legislative um, branches for each state. I think it's important. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a really cool way of incorporating that in uh, the immediate, you know, upon the immediate visit to the site. Okay, so you all know that I'm in here with my son. Give me one second. Asa, you should be off the iPad. Mm -hmm. And let's bring it down. All right, so I do, again, think that it is a really good idea to lead with that. Okay, all right, so we're in the 67th Legislative Assembly. And let's just read it because um, we're finding some nuggets here. They do seem to work pretty intuitively that I'm seeing thus far. All right, or, or purposefully with an you know, intention to re represent everything that North Dakota is about with the color choice, um, and the landing page, I'm imagining that they may have some type of youth uh, 
program to increase awareness for uh, legal education and politics. And so I'm going to look for that as well, considering the fact that they lead with that image, um, that kind of cartoon like image that we saw, excuse me. And then here, this would also make sense in that kind of educational aspect, increasing awareness, even for the general public, you know, just kind of lessening the intimidation, much like the focus of this format. And so explaining how they work, the inner workings without actually explaining, you know, kind of just walking you through the tour, if you will, without it being a literal tour. So it says the 67th Legislative Assembly consisted of a Senate of 47 senators and a House of Representatives with 94 representatives. I wonder why it speaks in the... Ah, interesting. So the first thing I noticed is that it speaks in the past tense. And that's because right now, evidently, there's an election um, uh, that's pending, much like North Carolina. But I, I haven't noticed where North Carolina's website has changed. Uh, there will be a, an election in, uh, well, there will be an election for which filing of candidates will begin in December. And I will be one of those um, that will be vying for office. It has been delayed or postponed the election here for many different reasons, um, including I imagine the pandemic. And I imagine that's what's going on here as well. So what they're suggesting here is that there's a 67th interim, which is in the meanwhile, most of us already know that word. And so, Interesting. This is the first time we've seen this, again, emphasized on the website. So we will look at both and hopefully it will uh, be convenient and not uh, befuddled as we look through. Initially, we see that they have separated them, so they've distinguished the difference between the two, so that's good. All right, the, leg the 67th Legislative Assembly organized December 1st through the 3rd, 2020, convened in regular session on Tuesday, January 5th, 2021, and adjourned April 29th, 2021. And that makes a lot of sense, considering the fact that there is um, uh, the onset of the pandemic, was definitely around that time. Uh, the heightened issues began around March. And we also know that South Dakota and North Dakota have been of interest for uh, increased um, cases of COVID. Let's look and see what's going on really quickly. COVID cases in North Dakota. So it makes sense that they would postpone the election and there would be an interim legislature. Okay, so what are we looking at? First of all, let's make sure. Okay, so this is New York Times. Mm, uh, you all know my feelings as it relates to um, information from uh, news publications. News publications uh, are very often driven by the status quo influence. So there may be some validity to um, their report, but we're going to rely upon uh, more reputable sources. So here we are, we're gonna go here. And this is the North Dakota government site here, official porter for North Dakota state government and their Corona cases coronavirus cases, all right? And I can appreciate this. Now we have not, I'm not gonna do a comparative because we have not viewed the other states, uh, state government <laughs> websites. So we're not gonna compare, but I do appreciate this visual. This visual is very appealing um and appears to be very concise 
and I can appreciate this. All right, so right now we're looking at November 20th. That's when their cases um, peaked. Okay, let's see. And let's look at April. So they actually were doing uh, fairly well, or especially comparatively compared to November in April. But of course there were shutdowns that were uh, mandated all throughout the country. And so that coincides with that. So let's look at current. All right, today or Friday was the 13th. So they do have cases on the rise. Uh, looking at 944, and I guess right now it's, uh, let's see, let me go back. Yeah, so 963 and 975 as of August 14th, which coincides with this number. So, and I like, I can appreciate the fact that they immediately show you the active positives. So you see that, and then you can, uh, view all of their history with COVID cases. Okay, and then this is the rolling average. Interesting, very interesting. Okay, so they adjourn in the, on the 29th. I think that was a good decision to make. But let's see what's going on with their interim and see how different it is from their regular assembly. Generally, the two representatives and one senator from odd number districts were elected to four year terms at the 2018 general election and two representatives and one senator from even numbered districts were elected to four year terms at the November 2020 20th general election. So I'm not really sure that why they would need an interim because we're looking at 2022 would be the election. And so in 2021, you would have candidates that would file. So they must have postponed the election. And then the even termed would be, or the even number districts, it would, their next election would be 2024. Anywho, that's very, very interesting. And all of that is relevant as it relates to the transformation that I am encouraging, which is empowering younger demographics and more diverse demographics to get involved in politics, run for office and flip seats of those who are not on the right side of justice. So this is very, very important information, okay? Let's go to the interim. Wait, what did it, let's see here. When I clicked on regular, I believe it took me straight to interim. Interesting, let's see here. Yeah, so is this convened, adjourn? So even clicking on the regular still takes you to the interim legislative assembly. So let's then click on their interim, okay? And let's go to house members. Okay, so this is very similar to what we've seen on other state legislative websites where we have the picture, we have the name, of course, their district, um, their partisan affiliation, and then some other, uh, categorized uh, committees, if you will. So let's go ahead and count them. We Well, we should know the number considering that the interim and the regular seem to be leading to the same place. So it appears that their interim officials were uh, from their regular legislative assembly and they're just in that position in the meantime, right? So we already know the numbers for the total, not necessarily the partisan breakdown, but that will help us. 
So we have 47 senators and 94 House. All right, so let's do the House first. We're working with 94. Let's see how many of those are Democrat, okay? So we're gonna start with uh, Republican. We started with Democrat before, I believe. And here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. I think we know where we're going. 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, eek. 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66. Wow, 67. I've not ever seen on any of the legislative websites before and during this series where an official was expelled. So we've got to look into that. So Luke Simons was expelled on March 4, 2021. Interesting. And that was definitely during the period of the, you know, the onset of the pandemic. So I wonder if it was pandemic related. Interesting. All right. So 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80. Uh, so it's safe to say that there's a majority for the Republican Party in North Dakota. <laughs> um, looks like we've got 14 Democrats. Uh, it does appear that there is a white uh, or Caucasian male majority for North Dakota. I don't see any diversity that it looks like it might know that's also a Caucasian man. Let's see here. I do not see any diversity. No ethnic diversity or apparent ethnic diversity. Wait, hold on, let's see. Okay, so Ruth Buffalo might be, yep. Looks like she's Native American. Uh, we can, uh, deduce this from uh, the designation of her biography. She's affiliated with the Fargo Native American Commission and the National Native Boarding School Hearing or Healing Coalition. Interesting. And the National Center for American Indian Enterprise Development. I wonder what this is. Is this a, co uh, excuse me, is this a holistic medicine association? Let's see. Or is it uh, cultural healing, you know, healing from the injustice, the many injustices uh, that they were subjected to? And it looks like that's what this is about. Resources for self-care and trauma, healing voices. This is awesome. Very awesome. Um, and she should have been elected. I'm glad that, uh, that North Dakota elected her. So this is someone that we need to highlight. I'm going to uh, definitely, let's see here. We're gonna post her on the website. So let's go ahead and highlight her. Get on in here.
Okay. And here we go. And I'm also going to highlight the website for the Healing Coalition because that is paramount that we follow associations like that and that we are supportive and show our solidarity in action, not just passively supporting them. All right, so I'm going to post that. And I'm also going to post this here. I'm going to take this picture because <laughs> I'm going to add it. I don't know if it will. And we're going to leave this here and evolve weekly. I don't know if it will actually come up as um, a picture when I post the link. So that's the reason why I am saving the picture because this is important for us to see this representation. Where was I right here? Oh, here, Oop. let's go, let me move myself. You can't see me move my, the image of where they have my video feed. Let's see, nope, see it doesn't come up so let me see if it will allow me to add the picture healing. All right. And let me take a moment, one second, and highlight her. During today's session, I'll be involved weekly. We highlight Buffalo. Awesome. Okay, and she's uh, House of Representatives District. I think it said 27. Let me go back and make sure. Yep, 27. Boom, okay, now let's go back over. And after this series, I do plan on taking a deeper inventory into those officials that we've highlighted along this journey and really continue this survey and make it into a lifestyle. That's what's intended to make politics a lifestyle that we you know we increase the public valuation for an understanding and involvement in our political system okay that's how we transform it that's the best way okay i'm not going to add any products because that's not tasteful let's go back over And that's wonderful. See, she was recognized by the National Center for American Indian Enterprise Development for uh, those Native Americans who are under 40 doing big things. That is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We need to follow what she's doing. In fact, now that we already know about the partisan makeup for the House of Representatives, we can take just a moment and uh, see what committee she serves on. So she's on the, in the interim, she's serving on the healthcare committee, which is great. Um, Cause that relates to what uh, the uh, psychological aspect of healing, right? Um, and the judiciary committee, that's awesome. Um, this is for societal and economic impacts of gambling addiction, juvenile justice, spousal support, um, membership of the Board of University and School Lands and the membership of the Industrial Commission, uh, juvenile justice, uh, licensing shelter care programs, runaway homeless and former foster care youth, 
and the ability of these youth to access temporary shelter. Oh, this is awesome. Uh, nation's current firearm and ammunition shortage and the impact the shortage has had on the quality of life for uh, North Dakota citizens. So they're talking about the agriculture, right? Um, because too often we, we unfortunately with the rise in mass shootings, we associate um, uh, firearms with that. And there is also the relevance for firearms for agricultural um, impact and self-sufficient farming. And that's what it looks like their focus is on. This is awesome, really cool. And then also sexual abuse of children, the prevention thereof. Way to go, Ruth. Okay, so then let's go to, and of course, agriculture and judiciary again, correction and revision of the journal. I don't know what this is, let's see. It's a house procedural committee. So like parliamentary procedure, it looks like revision of the journal. Think of it as a ledger, you know, and uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, I, I can't say it enough. That's awesome. So we definitely need to keep an eye on her. If you didn't notice, let me go back to it. She is on this committee with all men. That's awesome. Okay. Let's go here. And the hope is, is that those men are, you know, that they are a productive committee and that they're working together and that they're uh, learning from one another and not just, you know, in that, in that space, you know, fueling more misogynistic mindsets or uh, partisan uh, division. I hope that's not the case. Uh, I definitely stand in solidarity with those who are Native American um, because you all, uh, if you've been following me, then you know that I am also of Native American heritage, um, uh, Cherokee, and of course of African American uh, heritage as well. Uh, my dad by way of Haiti, as I understand it, by way of Nyack, New York, and then my mom being of African-American descent and uh, Cherokee. Okay, so let's go now to the Senate. We know there are 47. Okay, we can scroll through and equally we see lack of ethnic diversity. Uh, looks like again, with the exception of one Native American, so that they, I'm getting the impression that what they did is they focused on getting, um, you know, backing two candidates to get them on the uh, House of Representatives team and then one on the Senate, um, but they're different districts, so I'm not really sure. Um, I would imagine also that they, uh, you know, promoted candidates to get them on, uh, on the team for other districts as well. It's definitely worth looking into uh, further. Richard Marsalis or Marcellus, and I may be pronouncing that incorrectly. Let's see, he's also a Vietnam veteran. Let's see here. He is evidently uh, yeah, or evidently American uh, native Chippewa tribe. Let's see. Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa. Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa, let's see. And this is in North Dakota. I'm just curious. So we'll pull this up. Let's 
It's a Native American tribe of Ojibwa and the Mitis or Maitis or uh, peoples based on the Turtle Mountain Indian Reservation in Belcourt, North Dakota. The tribe has 30,000 enrolled members. And it appears that he is obviously a member of that or was from 2000, or we'll see he was a chairman. So I would imagine that he's still part of the Chippewa tribe, um, but he served as a chairman from 2008 to 2010. Uh, American Legion Central Region, also the North Dakota Native American Hall of Honor. Awesome. Two children and nine grandchildren, and he's been a senator since 2007. So he's got a long standing. And I hope, because again, we don't know that those who are in ethnic groups that uh, we generally stand in solidarity you know, together with, sometimes, as I've told you many times before, those of us who look like us are not for us. But we can hope that since he has a long standing, that he's there because of his good work and being on the right side of justice and not there because he has earned this grandfathered seat uh, by selling out and being complicit and on the wrong side of justice. So this is someone we can look into further. Let's see. And it actually shows, hold on, it shows view the full legislative history. I like that. I like the fact that it gives us that immediately there where we don't have to look in a different area. So I definitely applaud North Dakota for um, having that link immediately available because it does come up just as, as you all are learning more and more, um, this thankfully I have known this principle, you know, that not everybody that looks like you is for you. I've known this all my life. That's how I was raised. I was raised to believe that all people are my people. And again, that second principle, which has really, really come in handy as I have navigated and, it, and explored uh, the nation with my professional career and my personal aspirations. Um, and so it's very important that you have that understanding so that you can, you know, so you can survey your environment and you can really understand who you're dealing with, who comes into your space and not just take for granted that because they look like you, gender or ethnic wise, that they are on the same page as you or on the right side of justice. Sometimes they can be your worst enemy. So I'm glad that they would actually make that link available because for those of us who are enlightened, we would immediately question whether or not this person is on the right side of justice. We would just not take for granted by their physical by him wearing the headdress, by him, you know, having this, you know, this designation of being a chairman with the Chippewa tribe, we would not just take that as, you know, at, as the gospel. And instead we would see that on face value and we would research it further. So I do like that fact. Okay. And it looks like um, they've got it all listed here which is awesome. Let's see here, since the 60th assembly and for the same district, so it appears he's well-respected. He served on the education policy for quite some time, government finance, government administration, um, legislative office, excuse me, audit and fiscal review, uh, veteran affairs. He's part of the business administration, structural drafting degree. Very interesting. I'm gonna highlight him as well. And we need to keep up with what he's doing as well.
and show him solidarity and accountability, right? It goes both ways. So let me go ahead and copy paste him as well. But what's not good, you know, what's potentially good here is that these individuals, these uh, lone rangers, no pun intended, are on, you know, they have found their seat. They are finitely in their positions and hopefully they are making an impact on the right side of justice. That's the hope. But the bad part about this is that they are lone rangers. You know, we don't know how much impact they've had. The general uh, philosophy of thought for the Midwestern Republican is one that is rooted in uh, racism and uh, divide and uh, economic exploitation of American natives and slaves. So, you know, we don't know what we're dealing with here, right? And here, I'll show you the history of slavery. Let's look up this really quickly because we're coming up soon here on wrapping this up. The history of slavery in North Dakota. Okay, so we got a wiki, um, but we want to go where we have a little more yeah, let's go to let's let's go to the EDU. Generally, generally, not always, generally when you're looking for the truth as it relates to history, it is normally most accurately found by educational resources. Because if you're dealing with uh, academics, scholars in education, they will have a commitment to the integrous uh, reporting and uh, discovery for historical references, right? As opposed to the government. That does not mean that the government is reporting inaccurate history. That's not what I'm saying. Just generally speaking, we can trust the other source uh, uh, more often. Let's go here. See here. Uh, African Americans were present throughout the duration of white settlement and have been involved in every stage of North Dakota's history from 1800 to 1940. However, historians generally have neglected the existence of Black uh, people in North Dakota's past. This study examined the participation by African Americans in North Dakota, Dakota's social and economic history from 1800 to 1940. Further, the author explored the motivations for African Americans entering and settling in the state. So migrating from other areas, right? Um, they would have migrated from coastal areas, right? Because they would have been shipped in from coastal regions. And let's see, and the reason why only slightly over 200 black residents remained in 1940. Let's see. Chapter two centered on the movement of former slaves out of the black belt and their incentives for settling in Northern and Western states and territories, including North Dakota. Uh, I know that some did find refuge and uh, a version of freedom, but uh, segregation stereotypes and suspicion display displayed the various aspects of discrimination that black people encountered in North Dakota. Um, so there you go. And even here, despite the hope of economic and social betterment in North Dakota, black people discovered that they could not avoid racism even in North Dakota. Okay, so I just wanted to pull up something so that you would know for those of you who may not have realized that uh, and you can very easily you know, this is what thesis and dissertations, this is awesome information. And I just, again, you're noticing that how simple it is to conduct research and weed out the, the references 
citation, the sources that may not be uh, accurate, right? And it's very easy. You see, you see that I am still using Google as a search engine. I'm using Safari as a search engine. Um, you know, Safari by way of Google. And we're still able to very organically go through this process. And I hope that I'm showing you and uh, that this is not intimidating and uh, that you can do this and have great confidence in reaching verifiable, reputable re uh, sources of information. All right, so let's go back to Richard because I said I wanted to highlight. I'm gonna make sure I have that copied and go over here. I'm gonna highlight him as well. Okay. It doesn't give us this picture. I'm going to, uh oh, where'd I go? I am going to, where is he at? I'm going to pull this picture if I can. Yeah, there we go. And we're going to place it here so you know exactly who we are highlighting. All right. Okay, a little too loud. A little too loud. I'm almost done here. All right. So we're going to just list that because that gives you, you know, the, his history of legislative service, right? Very interesting. So let me just make sure to say that we also highlight it. Richard. Okay. Boom. Here we are. Okay. All right. For the last few minutes, we're going to go ahead and head on over here. And again, we're not going to tag any products because that's just not tasteful. Um, let's go on over here. Now that we have taken just a visual inventory, we definitely need some representation there. Now, admittedly, and here, let me look this up before, I'm gonna make the statement, but then I'm going to back it up with, you know, with facts. North Dakota, we all generally know, um, is predominantly, you know, uh, inhabited by Caucasians, right? Caucasians and Native Americans. Um, let's see, North Dakota population demographics. So admittedly, then, its legislature appears to be a representation, you know, an, an equal representation of its population makeup. However, remember what I've told you, you don't necessarily want just literal uh, uh, equivalents, right, especially in areas where you have a predominant ethnic group. When you have that predominant ethnic group, they should not be the majority because the other ethnic groups are valid and their perspectives are valid and their needs are valid, their religion, their culture, those things are valid, right? Because it's valid at the federal level, it's valid at the state level as well, even though there is this assertion, this purporting that you're seeing that's going on like Mississippi and Missouri are like, we do things the way we do it because we have that state sovereignty. No, that's not how that works. You're obfuscating legislative um, uh, provisions and empowerment that, you know, was bestowed upon states by the federal government, by the, you know, by the ratification, by the establishment of the federal government. At the end of the day, federal law is still prevailing. Discrimination, running your state, the how you, how you wanna run your state is not how the federal statutes are set up. It's all cap. 
Okay, so let's look really quickly and then we'll wrap this up today. Uh, okay, census, I think I may have to enlarge this. Okay, what we got here? Yeah, see, so white or Caucasian, right? 86.9%, wow, good gracious. Um, and it looks like they've got about gender-wise about 48%, so it's half and half. Um, about a quarter of the population is under 18. That's interesting. Okay, Black Americans there, 3.4%. Uh, even the Native American population is, is you know, not too far behind um, or not too much more than um, the Black American uh, population. There's a small Asian population and Pacific Islander, good gracious, uh, 0.1%, and then uh, biracial, 2.3%. Uh, so yes, it's a literal representation that, you know, that holds true, right? Literal representation of the ethnic makeup for North Dakota, but that's not how this works. Again, there needs to be more presence of African-Americans there, uh, American natives there, Native Americans, Asians, and Pacific Islanders, right? And those who are of two races. Um, some would consider me biracial, um, even though, of course, at the, at the end all be all, of course, I identify as Black. I am diasporan. Um, the core of me is, you know, evidently from West Africa, right? Okay, so then let's come out of this. So they, they do need to flip some more seats, period, okay? All righty, I keep closing Safari one more time. Let's go over here. All right, let's count it and then we're out of here. We know it's a majority or we presume at this point, right? But let's count. So of the 47, let's see. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Well, damn. Well, damn, fam. 40 of 47 are Republican. And yes, there is, you know, there is some significant gender diversity here. I do see quite a few women. Is this? Yeah, no, that's a Caucasian man as well. Okay, all right, because I can't, some of the pictures are a little small, that's, can't really tell. Hmm. Can't really tell. Um, for this gentleman, uh, if you know, like I know, uh, having worked in uh, the Department of Interior, as a federal ranger, some of you are aware of this, worked at uh, two different uh, park locations, both border parks, Shenandoah National Park and Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument. Um, when they speak about the two or more races, right? Um, often you see in these regions, uh, you see individuals who are biracial because you have those who are uh, transplants, if you will, like I would have, uh, I could have potentially been the same, if you will. So here I am, the only African American woman working on this park site. And of course, then the potentiality is that I would date what, you know, who is available. Um, and of course, there were very few, if any, um, African Americans, well, number one, none on the park site, right? 
Um, and then maybe the neighboring cities, um, the closest city was uh, about 30 minutes away. And then the, the closest largest city for Oregon Pike Cactus National Monument was Arizona or Tucson. Now, of course, then you would find a little more diversity, um, but still the pickings were slim for, you know, dating African-American men, right? Um, so then you have this, uh, these individuals who have a lot more olive in their skin, like this gentleman. Now, his, the olive in his skin may be, you know, the tone. Um, it may be from, you know, maybe a different heritage, maybe Greek, maybe Italian, who knows. Um, but there were individuals, what I'm speaking about, um, and in fact, when I lived in uh, Shenandoah uh, or Lou Ray, Virginia, to be more exact, uh, in Lou Ray, there is a particular group of individuals that, you know, have this uh, biracial dynamic, if you will, um, and they call themselves the we sorts. I don't know if you're familiar with it. If you're familiar with it, drop a comment, um, because that was a very interesting learning experience for me uh, when I was a ranger at Shenandoah, um, and he actually kind of uh, resembles those individuals who were um, uh, a result of marriages um, between Caucasian and uh, Native American uh, peoples in that area. So there you go. Interesting. But he's still one of few, and it would still only be, if, if he is, it would still be only two in this entire body, right? And that's not enough. Not enough. All right. So now we've covered North Dakota, their legislative branch. And it's interesting to say the very least. Let me stop sharing here. Uh-oh, I lost my spot. Let me go back here. Where are we at? Boom. And boom and zoom. Zoom is here though. There we go, stop share. Now I see it. <laughs> All right. Easy does it, people. That was a very, very interesting survey. Join me next week and we will cover South Dakota. All right. I am Tiger Sydney Acute McDaniel, and this has been another session of Evolve Weekly. Have a wonderful week.